Hey there, I'm Lauren, your good, good friend. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I'm, I'm Elijah. I'm, I'm a little flustered, a little nervous. Um, this, yeah, this is Hell Yeah Buddy. And, Hell Yeah uh, Buddy. We're talk a little bit today. Yeah, right? so uh, today we're talking about the Digimon pot or <laughs> Digimon podcast. <laughs> the Digimon movie. This podcast yeah. is about reminiscing over uh, fun uh you know nostalgic media like video games and cartoons and stuff yeah kind of just like a personal time capsule for us to reminisce on things that we cared about and still care about um I, we're not really gonna blow anyone's minds i feel like this is more just like a personal thing for me and you i kind anything. of think we're gonna blow some minds you think so no <laughs> 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 wouldn't that be nice I mean, yeah, I, maybe someone out there will hear this and they'll be like, what? I didn't know about the freaking Digimon movie. Can I uh, swear, by the way? The, Are we allowed to thing? swear? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't care. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, I do know that we can have the option to get ad revenue if we want to, if we want to do some sort of um, sponsorships in the future. Oh, okay. But I don't think that is I don't a, think that's a gonna problem. Happen. Yeah, so yeah, you, you <laughs> can say fuck, you can say shit. Like, I don't, I don't care. Yeah, um... Yeah, I have a lot of ideas for us, for things that we are eventually going to talk about. But yeah, today we're kind of just, we're going to talk about the Digimon movie, which is very exciting. Yeah, I, I got, I got a whole, I got a whole list of um, different ideas I want to, you know, bring up to you. But, but Digimon is what we're doing today. And I rewatched mm -hmm. the movie um, specifically so it was fresh in my mind. Um, so I kind of want to start with the Angela Anaconda Okay. short at the beginning yeah what are your thoughts okay okay so um i don't want to be too like too trivia about this but i do okay. want to like talk a little bit about it because it's so All weird right. um so for for people who haven't seen angela anaconda um it was just a really strange animated series by joanna ferone and sue rose who did pepper ann um do you remember that one on nickelodeon I no, I Pepper Ann. I've never yeah. heard of. I never I, even really watched Angela Anaconda. I think okay, okay. My only experience of the show was from the Digimon movie. Okay. So I was very <laughs> confused watching the Digimon movie yeah. when I was little. Yeah. So Angela Anaconda was weird because it like blended that like style of like CG bodies and backgrounds with like cut and paste faces and stuff. Very unique um, style, that's for sure. Yeah, and so I was I was kind of just curious what what it was from like what started that um so i looked it up and uh, apparently it was actually a sh short sketch series on nickelodeon's kablam um which i was super into as a kid it was like a uh like a, a variety show with sketches in different formats and medias like some were like uh stop motion some were claymation some were cartoons um there's this really good one i remember called prometheus and bob which was a claymation series that was silent, but it was about an alien who was like hanging out with a caveman, like trying to teach him stuff. Okay. Um, but yeah, so Angela Anaconda was a short on there that got picked up and they ran on Fox Family with like a, a short series from 1999 to 2001. Um, and I have no idea why they thought it was a good idea to put it in a Digimon movie. Yeah. <laughs> like it got pretty mixed and negative reviews. Yeah, I uh, um, I remember reading a story from it was either like someone reviewing the Digimon movie, and I was just reading about what people had to say about it, and someone was telling a story about how they had the Angela Anaconda short had essentially made their parents get divorced. Oh my god! <laughs> <What>? <laughs> like I think it was a little bit. Uh, I don't. I don't. Honestly, a slight don't know how exaggeration. Much this story was true. Yeah, it might have been a slight <laughs> exaggeration, but. Uh, I could see it. I could see it causing a divorce for sure. So okay. So, <laughs> so the story was like he went. He really wanted to see the Digimon movie when he was younger, and his parents were already bickering at this point, and mm -hmm. the the marriage was kind of falling apart. But um, they kind of uh, with you know withstood each other for a while to take their child to a movie, <laughs> and they sat down and started watching it, and they were like. You, they started bickering basically about like the, you took us to the wrong movie, like the, oh no, like, yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> and, and the story just ends with um, basically them leaving the theater and very like short after that, <laughs> uh, uh, they got divorced. But um, 
Dude, I would believe yeah, I, it actually, because that that short itself, if you haven't seen it, please go and like look it up on YouTube or something, because it is just an atrocious ca- time capsule of like 2000s hot garbage. Um, but the I don't know if you remember very well, but the gist of it is that Angela and her friends are in line for the Digimon movie and she gets cut in line by Nanette, which is her bully. And so she imagines herself digivolving into Angela Mon. <laughs> Mm-hmm. which I looked it up and on the unofficial Digimon wiki Angela Mon is a character yeah <laughs> her that's great the the screenshot from the short and all she is a Digimon <laughs> she is a full-fledged Digimon she is um yeah I'm I kind of wonder what they were thinking it had to have been like they were trying to cross promote or something they were like they, yeah I think they really wanted it. Fox yeah yeah it was right? uh Fox Kids um yeah, I don't know. I don't know why they thought that was a good idea, because it wasn't. <laughs> like, it makes me wonder if it was maybe some higher-ups or, uh, like, corporate producers just being, like, or corporate corporate executives being, like, yeah, this Japanese, like, animated film. Because an- anime at the time, like, wasn't huge. Nah, they so, were trying to Americanize it, like, as much as possible, basically. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, okay, well, like, what are the kids in, like, what's a popular kids show now? Oh, Angela Anaconda, and yeah, oh, this, we is, own, this like, is something we're trying to promote property. right now. Yeah, yeah. It, that had to be it. I think so. Um, but once the short is over, we are greeted by a slapping Digimon rap. Oh, yeah. That- oh, it's so good. I, I love it so much. Uh, I wish I remember the words like the digi evolution. Yeah, the digi evolution. Uh, uh, did you see? Did you hear? Did you know what's coming? <laughs> the digi destiny starts today. Let me. Okay, I'll stop. No, no, <laughs> but, no, no. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I absolutely adore that song. And I do too. I, I think I know more of the lyrics to that song than I do for the Pokemon rap. I will say that. <laughs> I remember the Pokey rap pretty darn well. Um, but the, but that was so different because they were just listing Pokemon names in a fashion that rhymed. Mm. And this yeah. was like a straight up like weird Americanized like description yeah. of like what's happening. Oh, dude, um, it's so weird. It's so good. It's such a time capsule. This whole movie is. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, all the music in in this movie is just so. Oh, it's, 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 I love it's it. nothing but like early 2000s pop punk and ska. Mm hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know, I, I feel like it's so strange to see this Americanized anime movie. Because, like, the whole the whole movie takes place in Japan up until, like, the third act, and then they're in New York. Yeah. And they they even, like, talk about that. Like, you know, we were in Japan. Mm. Uh, meanwhile, Willis was in New York. <laughs> like, yeah. But it's still so weird and Americanized. Um, But, so, uh, the movie originally was three separate short films in Japan. Um, yeah, I was uh, reading a little bit on that today. Um, I kind of I've stopped reading just a bit because I thought it would be a little easier f- to have you explain more of like the trivia side of it. Um, for the people that haven't seen the movie, uh, it is very oddly cut into three like very different parts. Yeah, where the an- you can notice a difference in animation. It's pretty obvious yeah something Um, i something i realized today was uh the act two all of the fight scenes are cg um, yeah which i don't remember actually i i remember feeling like that whole movie is just this this beautiful piece of animated art and it really is all of the fight scenes in general are just so cool Mm -hmm. um but yeah i i did notice that the second act of the movie had a lot of cg and it's because there were three separate short films originally yeah um and i guess fox was trying to match the the success that the first two pokemon films had had um so they they actually cut out like 40 minutes of content in order to try and cram all three of these short films into one theatrical movie oh okay Um, yeah so it was the digimon adventures movies um and the the first you know beginning uh like eight years ago um, was actually a short that was released in Japan before the anime ever came out and it was never put out in America. And so they like use that to like, you know, create some sort of like beginning of the story. Um, so you kind of oh. had an idea of what was going on, but it, okay. it just turned, it turned out weird. Like they use Kari as the narrator because she's in all three of them, mm-hmm. 
But I mean, in in the third act, Ty and Matt aren't in it at all. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it. I personally, I think the style of the first act is definitely my favorite. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's so beautiful. Yeah, just the animation, and uh, I don't know what this th- this animation style is called, um, or if what it. Uh, yeah, I don't. But the cat <laughs> in the first act, how <laughs> it's go. animated. Yeah, I like it, it's. I I don't know if it's hand animated or if it's some form. It of is. It's definitely CGI. it's definitely hand animated. Okay, because um, yeah, that's what I was thinking. But yeah, it's some of like the best animation that. I've seen. <laughs> I really yeah. love. Whenever I, I whenever I bring up the Digimon movie to people, uh, I I stand by my belief that the fight scene in the beginning is one of the coolest fight scenes ever animated because there's oh. just so much strength in the weight and scale behind Greymon and Parrotmon like fighting. Mm-hmm. Um, the way they they destroy the environment around them and like the the weight to like lifting their legs up, they like look so big. It's it's just mm-hmm. really cool. It uh, feels more like a like a kaiju movie than yeah. it does like a Digimon movie. Totally, which is so yeah. strange because like you know Agumon's huge. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah, I, that was something I never really understood either. I'm sure the short original short story explains why the Digimon just like exist in the real world and why a giant egg appears out of the sky and <laughs> just drops a <laughs> yeah. drops Parrotmon. There's yeah. Um, but yeah. every time, uh, so in the first act, Kari, the younger sister, uh, she has this whistle because <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really know why. Because I don't know either. She just primarily communicates with a whistle. She can speak. Yeah, like, she can talk. So I don't. I think get Ty why even like says something. He's like, "What? You talk to the yeah, Digimon? He does. But you can't talk to me." Like yeah. Um. So it's just I just some weird character quirk. But, yeah, um, I, I think that there was something going on in the Japanese version that wasn't translated to us. Mm-hmm. But it is like a cute little quirky thing, so I, like I never it never bothered me really. Well, um, it leads to one of my favorite parts, um, one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie, which is very early on when Agumon uh, evolves into Greymon, and or Digivolves. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Digivolves in the Greymon, and Paramount just fucks him up. And oh, yeah, totally. He's, yeah. like, on the ground, eyes closed. Yeah. I, I actually put a note in here. I got goosebumps when he opens his Dude, eye. Dude, I, every time <laughs> every I watch time. that scene, I every get time. goosebumps. There's three scenes specifically in this whole movie uh, where I get goosebumps every single time, no matter how many times. I don't. I think I could watch this movie a million times and still get goosebumps. But yeah. that is one of the scenes when Ty blows on the whistle like as hard as possible Wait, and it rings Wait, through God. the streets of Tokyo. Oh, oh, and it's so sad because Kari's like you know trying and trying and trying and she's like coughing and like yeah, it's so sad. But I do really quickly want to go back to when Bodamon comes out of the egg. Mm. Um, I just feel like that scene's so cute and like really encompasses the idea of Digimon. Like mm-hmm. it like blows bubbles and like. I think Rockefeller skink kicks in <laughs> right about now. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it does. Uh, that might be yeah. when it, that might be when it digimo- digivolves into Coromon. Um, and then it poops a bunch too. Yeah. Because, and then it starts kissing Ty. Yeah. The yeah. pooping was like, okay. <laughs> I didn't think Digimon had the poop, but all right. Well, the poop to me makes sense. Cause I played the Digimon Tamagotchi toys. Uh huh. Um, and that was like a big problem in those games. It's like if you didn't clean up after them, they would get sick. So I think they were trying to like market it in a way that like really shows like Digimon are animals that like you have to take care of, and it's silly and funny. But like, well, you said um, the this first short film was released before the anime even came out, right? Yeah, it, it actually um, it was released. Oh, I can't remember how how long before the anime series started. Um, but canonically it takes place three years before all of the events of the TV show. Um, but I, I really think it was the pilot to Digimon. Okay. Yeah. So they probably just didn't really have the world. And yeah. That's why I think Agumon was so big. Yeah. I don't, I don't think they planned like the size of him yet. They just were like, Oh shit. Like Agumon's gotta be cool. Like it's it's a big fight scene we're planning. Um, um, 
So I've never seen the anime. I adore this movie, and I've never seen a single episode of the anime. Okay, that's a lie. Maybe I've seen one, but it wasn't. I've never seen the first episode. Um, are they shocked at all when they discover Digimon? Because if this takes place before the anime, yeah, they would obviously have to know about Digimon in the digital world, right? Right. So that's like the that's the weird thing is that they. Uh, what is it called? Retro. What is it when you go back and like change the story after it's like already been made? Uh, retroactively. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean, though. So yeah. in, in the anime, they had never ever seen uh, Digimon before, and they're they're all on like summer camp and get sucked yeah. into a telephone booth, and their like first experience with Digimon is like running into a, a Kabuterimon. Um. So yeah, like in in the movie, they they all had this experience which brought them together, and like they they learned about the Digimon. Um, Willis got his Digi Egg and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but it doesn't line up with the anime in, in canonical terms. Okay, yeah, I, I'm assuming that it's just non-canon. Like most of the movies are probably yeah. non-canon, like a lot of other anime. I think the, yeah, I think the movie isn't canon with the anime, but Mm. Digimon is such a strange IP that, like, none of the games are canon with the anime, and none of the movies are canon either. Um, But there's that new Digimon movie that came out, I think, in 2019, and Ty's all grown up and has, like, a kid, and that one is supposed to directly follow the anime. Okay, yeah, Um, they're they're doing, what is it, it's called, like, Digimon Adventure Try, right? Something like that new yeah there is a ton of movies um and a lot of them are free on youtube uh so i was like oh that makes when i was reading a little bit about them mashing up a bunch of other films into the one that we got here in the states yeah um i was like oh that makes a lot of sense because it seems like it's toei animation i think that does digimon Mm -hmm. um they must have just they must just pump those movies out for the Digimon series. I I wonder if they're more lucrative than the anime is because you get people buying the films rather than just using some sort of subscription service or uh, uh, whatever uh, t- like television medium that you use to watch anime. Yeah, totally. Like it, it makes a lot of sense in some ways because the anime had been running for a while when the movie came out. Um, but the, the movie brought in like $15 million or something like that with a budget of like five. Yeah. Um, and I think mainly because all they had to do is translate and kind of change up the, the tone and the script and stuff. Because they, they really mm-hmm. did. They changed the, the plot of it in general so they could fit it into a three-part movie instead. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you, you'd be, if, you were, if you were watching the Digimon anime at that time in 2001, you're watching reruns on Fox Kids. Like, they're, you're not yeah giving them money anyway and there wasn't a lot of digimon games there was you know a pretty decent toy line um but yeah it just wasn't as lucrative as pokemon so i think they were really just trying to to make some money really quick yeah oh actually that's a good point um talk about the toy line because that was a big selling point for the dragon ball series a lot of the money that dragon ball made was through toys yeah, totally. Uh, and the movies that they made were just designing characters that would make collector like good collectors items. Yeah, uh, I don't want to get too off topic, but um, He Man is almost the same story. If you if, if you watch the Toys That Made Us documentaries, um, they literally created the toys to sell. Yeah, and then they made the show to sell the toys. I think that was a similar thing with the cars disney pixar movie really that was pixar right the the concept was oh we need to make something that will sell really well like on the shelves and have this super uh money-making toy line and like what's more like what's more uh accessible and just easy to find than like a car right yeah, totally. What what is the the biggest collector's item for you know fifty to sixty years? Hot Wheels. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like just just little toy cars. Mm-hmm. So, um, oh, uh, so 
I love Kari's koala pajamas. Do you, do you remember that? She's like wearing a onesie. I, I do. Yes. They they go out to. Uh, it's when Agumon first like you know he, Koromon first digivolves into him, and they break through the wall and go outside and like smash the the soda machine. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so cute. And then it, oh, I just I couldn't help but like when he first uses Pepper Breath. Yeah. Like the 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 sound it creates, like a cannon, like boom, boom, boom. Oh. Like, yeah. So cool. It like blows up a car. He like shoots it into the sky he and stuff. He shoots out a helicopter, doesn't he? He does. He shoots out yeah. a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. One of my, another like really funny part. I, I have a couple funny parts that I want to talk about, but they're kind of later on in the movie. But one of the funniest parts in the movie is when he's like Agamon, Kari's riding Agamon. He's in the street and this truck is like, come is driving straight at Agamon. <laughs> the bus. And then, yeah. Or the bus or whatever. Yeah. And then, uh, the guy in the passenger seat goes, what, did you just see that? And, and, the, guy, and then the other guy goes, oh no, I was sleeping. He's like, what? You're but driving. you're driving. <laughs> that still makes me laugh to this yeah, day. It's, oh God, it's so funny. They have, such, they have such a good balance of little comedic jokes, um, especially like the mom and her weird recipes. It's such a mm-hmm. weird like theme. Well, uh, like, she's making liver be- sticks again. <laughs> like... It's definitely got to be the translators just having fun. Yeah, with totally. It and making up jokes because I, I don't, I don't know I, why. I don't think she don't was believe. probably a funny character at all in the original. Yeah, Japanese I feel like she version. was maybe just generic mom yeah. or something. Obviously, they had something going on because like Izzy runs to the bathroom. But we'll yeah. we'll talk a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, um, yeah. So they they break through the wall. They get, they smash the soda machine. He jumps over the bus shoots fire at the helicopter and then Parrotmon's egg descends and it's huge. Yeah. Way too big for what it's dropping. Yeah. Parrotmon is not that big. It's a little dramatic. It's very dramatic. It's, I don't know if they're trying to like illustrate like some sort of power level of Parrotmon and be like, oh, yeah. this guy's going to fuck up everything. He's Yeah, he's going to destroy. I don't, uh, yeah, I, I feel like they were just trying to give this grand sense of danger. Like, mm-hmm this is apocalyptic in some sort of way. Yeah. Which is weird because it's Parrotmon. Like, yeah, it's, it's, he's know, not a very not powerful Devimon. Digimon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but he's so funny. He's got like that really silly voice. He's like, I'm Parrotmon. I know. He's, he's <laughs> hilarious sounding. He sounds like just a, like a joke character in a yeah. fantasy game. <laughs> um, it's so yeah, good. I love that voice. Yeah. And then, and then Agumon digivolves into Greymon, which is so cool. He like bursts out of the 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 rubble that was like thrown on top of him, and they get into like that big fist fight. And I said it once, and I'll say it again: the amount of weight and scale the animators were able to produce in this scene is just phenomenal. It's so mm-hmm. cool looking. Yeah, I love uh, all the shots constantly cutting back to all the other uh, characters from the show. And yeah, all the kids like watching I, from outside. Yeah, how they're in their all apartments watching. and yeah. stuff. And then Nova mm-hmm. Flame. Nova Flame! <laughs> like, yeah. It's like a huge, like, directed beam. It's so cool yeah. looking. Very cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it kind of ends with just Greymon and Parrotmon, you know, f- duking it out. And then he hits him with a Nova Flame, and they just both disappear. And that's the end mm-hmm. of Act 1. And then it just skips to four years ago instead of eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really... It was really just a setup um, for what was about to happen uh, in the movie. Yeah, I don't. There yeah. was like not really a whole. I don't think that, like like I highly doubt in the anime they explain like why Parrotmon came to the nope. real world. He's or, not in the anime at all. I really yeah, think it I, was a pilot, like a pilot yeah. episode, um, in hopes of like getting picked up by a Japanese studio or something. Mm-hmm. It's definitely just one of those. Uh, kids things where it's just like okay like it kind of accepting what's happening just because it's happening uh, yeah like it doesn't have to make sense it's just so fun to look at yeah um yeah and then they really ramp up the music in the second act 
Oh yeah, and totally. They really go full force with the yeah, like what like you were saying, the early two thousands and like late nineties pop yeah. punk ska. tons of ska, tons of yeah. yeah. Yeah, like we so when they, they jump ahead the four years and we see Izzy discovering the virus, um on his on his computer setup which is so cool that's so 2000s i always wanted to be like that hacker kid with like the the laboratory Mm -hmm. or something um but the whole world is like watching this egg develop on screen and they're like it's developing abnormally fast (laughs) it like pops and it's like hello and it's a kuramon um which i really appreciate that ty says he looks like a cross between a jellyfish and a contact lens (laughs) yeah (laughs) And then, uh, and then the bare naked ladies kick in, and it, it's been one week. All the all the Digi Destins are like running around. They're kind of showing them, showing us what they were like up to this like summer or whatever. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's it's just such a, a fun like. Whenever I think of the Digimon movie, I think of One Week by the Bare Naked Ladies. Yeah, me too. Whenever I think of what, yeah, One Week by the Bare Naked Ladies, I think of Digimon. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> exactly. Movie. It's like it's tied together in my head now. They're like intertwined. Is like the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, so from that point, yeah, they're kind of like showing Mimi is. Uh, I guess they haven't got to that point yet. That Mimi's off on vacation. I think they might show her like on a beach. Um, yeah, but I think later on when Ty's trying to get a hold of the Digi Destins, they like show yeah. the postcard or whatever. So yeah, pretty much Izzy and Ty are the only two kind of like main participants in this act. I guess uh So TK and Matt TK come in a little Matt later. Do. Um yeah. But yeah, yeah, it it kind of the whole beginning part of this act revolves around Izzy and Ty discovering the virus, talking about it. Um, I think Kari goes to a birthday party and I really liked the line where she's like, I got my friend a pink power ranger. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, uh, Ty's all bummed out that he doesn't get cake. So mom is like, you know, I'll make a cake. I'll bake you a cake. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. 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 And then at one point she's baking the cake and she's like, I've never used flour before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as he's helping her out and he's like, is this enough flour? And she's like, I don't know. I've never used flour to make a cake before. <laughs> um, yeah uh one of my favorite lines early on is they izzy shows up um ty is like holding an egg uh like helping his mom to bake a cake or something like that (laughs) yeah and he's like holding the egg yeah and izzy shows up and like the egg is already hatched talking about the digi egg and and ty just (laughs) gives like the funniest look to the egg in his hand and izzy's just like no not that egg um I quote that all the time to <laughs> Kelsey to annoy her. I love that um, so much. And then Sumemon, um, they show him eating computer data, but it's like Pac-Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's such a strange like visualization of computer data. Yeah, it's it's clever, but also like doesn't it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, like, it's it's still technologically, fun. but it, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's weird, um, too, because in the, in the same act, they show Karamon eating data, and it's, like, actual, like, physical paper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you... Before you see Sumamon just, like, eating stuff like Pac-Man? <laughs> it's like... Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, but I... Uh, another... I, I'm sorry that I'm, like, getting sidetracked, but there was one other line that I really, really love, and it's when all of the technology is kind of going berserk um, because of the virus, and there's a like a convenience store and a guy's like buying chocolate mm-hmm. and the the girl like rings it up and she's like that'll be one million yen oh wow yeah. that must be really good chocolate yeah <laughs> yeah paper yeah. or Honestly, plastic paper or plastic <laughs> yeah <laughs> and the stupid noise he makes he's like oh <laughs> <laughs> <or whatever. laughs> yeah um yeah i really love this part of the movie and i super love like diaboromon's yeah design diaboromon's um, so fun yeah he's very he's like super creepy he's one of those childhood like characters monsters uh where he scared me but also thought i also thought he was cool yeah um, totally same with uh what is it infermon 
um, the, like the red and white version right before Diabormon. Yeah, Inframon, yeah. Yeah, he, he's so um, just like creepy looking and uncanny. Mm-hmm. Like there's this energy to it where like it just feels like it's so far from a human or an animal. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's just peak character design for sure. Um, yeah, it, he's got the, the the these tendril, almost spider like legs. Yeah, and the, really and the way creepy. they hop around and stuff. Same mm-hmm. with Diaboramon, he like jumps all the time, like you know, jumping from you know large distances, and it just looks so creepy and like bug like and like, but. But then we get uh, we get to see Matt and TK at their grandma's house, um, yeah. which is so great. They're they're Adorable. in the countryside visiting her, and TK is like giving her just like the shittiest massage. <laughs> she <laughs> she picks up the phone when Ty calls, and it's some of my favorite lines in the whole movie too, where he's like, "I'm trying to talk to TK and Matt. Are they there?" And she's like, "Oh, I'd love to talk to TK and Matt. They're my grandsons." Yeah, <laughs> and she like hangs up the phone on him. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, I don't know if at this point they have learned this, but they find out that uh, Inframon, or what is the evolution before that? I guess he doesn't turn into Inframon. So kind of like blue skin. Caramon's like the weird octopusy Caramon. one, and yes. he actually skips to the champion level. Um, the Chrysalimon is in between that. Oh, okay. Um, and they just kind of ignore that Digivolution. He's he's uh, evolving so quickly compared to a normal Digimon that he jumps to, like, champion. So, at one point, they Izzy finds out that Karamon is searching. I don't remember if he learns it from Willis, but Karamon is f- trying to find, like, the Pentagon. Uh, yeah. And to launch, fi- basically find nuclear launch codes to send them to... To send one to Tokyo and one to Colorado, right? Yeah. So the all of the internet goes out um, because of Karamon. I think he specifically goes to the phone like company first, um, yeah. and and then and then Izzy hacks into the government satellites to get yeah. their internet back. Um, and there's this really good part where it shows hit them talking to TK and Matt, and their their webcams frame rate is just like two mm-hmm. frames a second. Um, but yeah, they, they, they figure out that, I don't remember if it's Diaboramon at this point, but he's definitely targeting Willis in the U S and mm-hmm. he's sent out these nuclear missiles and like the U S is like, we, we accidentally launched missiles and like, we don't know what to do. <laughs> like no yeah. one can stop them from going anymore. Which is um, uh, ridiculous, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Izzy gets diarrhea and Ty slaps the computer and it freezes yeah uh i think i think that's a little at that point matt is starting to help i think um because what what time misses is like the battle where war graymon is like knocked out yes okay uh before that there's this really funny scene that i absolutely adore where izzy and ty they leave the computer for some reason and they come back and the cat it's on the computer on yeah cat.com yeah meow. yeah the, the computer goes thank yeah. you for visiting meow.com <laughs> yeah I, I think that's the part where izzy goes to get his like weird like phone thing so they can get into the government satellites yeah that sounds about right um, and there's like that brief moment where like uh ty is just like hanging out with his mom for a minute and she's talking about like beef jerky shakes or something yeah um but yeah so so matt and them they're all talking on the webcams the low frame rate and War Greymon and Metal Gurumon are like fighting Diaboramon, and there's this really cool scenario where everything is like black scaffolding on just like a white void. Um, yeah. And, and Diaboramon's just like jumping back and forth between these places, and he like practically kills Tentomon and Patamon for like a minute there. Mm-hmm. Like he just ins- he instantly pins. Yeah, he pins Patamon them both. And, ten- and Tentomon, yeah. Um, um, yeah, that scene is really cool the more that i think about just the creativity behind that scene um makes me appreciate it a lot more Uh, i definitely think that just the direction that they took with the fight scenes and the like the beginning was 
cool because they kind of had this like kaiju battle and it was big monsters or whatever but they definitely had to get a lot more creative um in the second act of the film yeah oh, it's yeah. especially in 2001 it's it's really tough to visually portray what the internet looks like yeah because it's not really a physical thing um so yeah I, I just love when they show like you know them like flying through the i don't know what they are like the the digital like gateways or something mm-hmm. and like i just I, I love that imagery that they were able to come up with it's very creative um, yeah a, a great way to personify uh, i guess not personify but yeah just visually convey the internet yeah and, this is a digital and, and space it. Yeah. which isn't something you can view like that mm-hmm. so um but yeah so the the usa accidentally launches the two nukes <laughs> mm-hmm. and then dio Boromon starts duplicating himself and they're like there's 70,000 and there's 75,000 and counting yeah <laughs> Um, but at the same time, all of these kids, all these stupid trolls are like saying mean shit about War Greymon. Sh- absolutely shit talking. <laughs> yeah. Like as if they like, as if they know Digimon could do anything. Yeah. Like, or like know what's going on. Yeah. They basically just like these two guys fucking Greymon, War Greymon and, and Metal Greymon getting their asses yeah. kicked by. <laughs> yeah. They must suck. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay. they must suck. and all those emails are like slowing down. War Greymon and Metal Gururumon, they can't even, like, move because they're getting bogged down by so much information. Yeah. And the uh, the clones are, like, basically just kicking their asses. Yeah, all the kids shit-talking <laughs> the, uh, uh, Ty and Izzy are... I feel like they are more of a, of a prediction of the internet than they actually do yeah, <laughs> at the time. totally. That's probably the only thing that uh, probably still holds up. <laughs> yeah, just a bunch of trolls. Just, and it, yeah, just I find it so funny to too, uh, because it's all through emails. They like directly mm-hmm. sending Izzy emails, which doesn't like, how really do make get, a lot of sense. Yeah, how does I get Izzy's email? Yeah, it's not a message board or Twitter. And also, uh, it must have been a program that was like popular in Japan that just every or I don't know how they used to do email, but like at one point it's uh war Greymon and metal guru Ruman start to slow down because of all the emails the mass amounts of emails that are being sent to them yeah but what i never got is like what can't you just like not have your email open yeah like log out or it's not like a physical <laughs> yeah it's not like a physical mail being sent to an address yeah it, why did it directly affect the digimon especially ty's digimon if izzy's the yeah. one receiving emails um, kind of, a, kind of a plot hole, I guess. But yeah, I mean, in in the end, that's what they they use it. It's their plot device to yeah. stop the Diaboromon. Yeah. Um, but before that, there's this part where <laughs> Ty's mom comes in. Uh, so the the bond between Ty and War Greymon is just so so strong oh, that he yeah. literally transports through the mm-hmm. computer monitor and then. Ty's mom comes in. And she's like, "I'll just leave you two alone." Wait, where's Ty? <laughs> <laughs> like him and Matt both travel into the digital space, mm-hmm. um, and and there's this like super emotional scene where like War Greymon and Metal Greymon are like they're 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 on the last string. Yeah. They're like about to die, and like Ty and Matt like float down, and like it's so dramatic, and like it's like the scene from the Pokemon movie where Ash gets frozen in stone. Mm-hmm. Like as a kid, I was just like sobbing, <laughs> like at that part. Um, but then the opposite happens, and they get power from the trolls' emails. Yeah, the encouragement yeah, that scene where they go into the computers. It, it's definitely. Uh, I always kind of saw it as a throwback to Ty trying to wake up Greymon. Yeah, uh, totally. He's like, I don't have a whistle now, but yeah, <laughs> like. Yeah, that is an a, that's another part in the movie where I just get chills every single every single time, and I just yeah. get this dumb, just childlike smile on my face because it's just so it's just so ridiculous and corny, and it's just something you could only love if you had experienced it as a kid. Yeah, I've tried showing it to, this movie to people before um, as adults. 
And yeah, if you if you didn't like the movie or the IP growing up, like it's really hard to take seriously in some ways. But like having that connection to those memories, <laughs> I was like tearing up at that scene. Like, oh no, well, Greymon, I'm here. I I know. Yeah, <laughs> I I can't help but get so invested. Uh, yeah. So good. And then the power of the emails allow Metal Garurumon and War Greymon to combine into Omnimon, which is one of the coolest designs ever. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, he and, had, uh, they also use. They completely changed the animation style for these sequences where they digivolve. Yeah. And it's this soup. It's. Since it's like from early two thousands, it's a very crude like three D animation. Mm -hmm. uh, it does not look good, no. but for the time, <laughs> I'm sure it looked all right. It, it was a it was for the time. It was like whoa, like oh my god, yeah, look that's how so cool. Crazy they look. Yeah. And nowadays, you can recognize that as they were trying to save animation budget. Yeah, um, it was it was cheaper to to do that in CG, and I feel like a lot of these fight scenes used a lot of CG actually. Um, mm -hmm. just in act two by act three they go right back to the original um hand draw animation which when you watch it you know again when i watched it today it definitely has this this weird sense of disconnect between those acts it, like kind of reminded me that hey this is three separate short films combined into one mm -hmm. um yeah all created at in, at different points in time too, so you can definitely notice just the age, and you could see uh, where animators were learning like little tricks to save on time and save on money. Uh, I think in the third act, they use I, I at least remember one part where I don't know if it's the characters are fully animated. Or sorry, hand drawn, but the background is animated, or yeah, like three D animated. Yeah, um, yeah, but in yeah, so they in the second part they send the emails to Diaboromon. At at this point, Omnimon is like a total badass. And oh just, yeah, he swings uh, his transcendent destroying... sword and like wipes out like half of the the mm -hmm. bad guys and a rad pop rock song kicks in. Yes, <laughs> so oh god, cool. what song is that? Uh, I don't remember. I think it was a. I think it was an original song. There are a couple, uh, a handful of original songs for the movie. Uh, there are, I can't remember, there are two songs specifically that I know uh, weren't made for the movie. I mean, obviously there's the Bare Naked Ladies song, and then mm -hmm. there's a song called uh, The Impression That I Get by the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. <laughs> okay. Um, and then there's another song called All My Best Friends Are Metalheads by another <laughs> band. Um, but they're very, yeah, like very pop punk and ska. And I've been listening to those two songs a bit here and there, and they actually got me back into Real Big Fish. Oh, dude, uh, absolutely. She's yeah. not the end of the world. Yes, I love that song. That's one of my uh, jams right now. They're definitely what I've been bumping lately is uh, Real Big Fish, just because of this movie, watching it recently. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I genuinely love ska music in general. Um, it's such a, a part of our time. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, so so uh, Omnimon, he, he wipes out like a large portion of the Diaboromon clones and the original is spotted and he starts like jumping around and like the missile is about to hit down in Japan um, and they, they send all the emails to slow down Diaboromon and then Omnimon just like fucking cuts right through his head and it like melts and there's like a yes. clock in the center there's and it's a clock so cool. inside yeah that was <laughs> that is way cooler having it described <laughs> than actually seeing it i think <laughs> i don't know dude i feel like that scene was like pretty impressive the way like the the blade goes through like dio boromon's head and he just like melts and, like, mm. <laughs> it looked cool yeah um but the uh, the missile lands in the water and all the you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's just fun. Yeah, the yeah the new one of the nukes or missiles or whatever lands in front of like right in front of them in Tokyo. Yeah, it doesn't right? blow. And then, an, <laughs> and then another one of the missiles, because two are being sent, and it falls in the ocean near Hawaii, in Hawaii, <laughs> where Mimi is on vacation. 
So, like, it cuts to Mimi that's lounging in a chair or whatever. And then, uh, like, a missile drops out of the sky and it starts raining. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, like, splashes the water into the air for yeah. no reason. Like, yeah. It's fun. Uh, um, and, of course, yeah, they celebrate. And, uh, I don't really remember what happens after that. So, uh, the email that Ty had been typing out to Sora in the beginning. That's right. Um, yeah. He was trying to apologize for the hairpin that he bought her for her birthday. Yes. And, um, and yeah. there was, there's the drama between them where she's like, what? Like, you don't like my hair. And he's like, no, I can't see your hair. It's always in your hat. And she's like, what? You don't like my hat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he typed on that email and he accidentally says love Ty. And I think the first, the second act ends with the email being delivered and her being like, Ugh, stupid Ty. So baka. <laughs> and then uh we get that shot of willis and the and the twin digimon and it just cuts and like that's the end of second act um okay, and it, it skips yeah. ahead to present day yes yeah that's right because it it just kind of shows willis and i don't know what the like pre-evolutions of terriermon and kokomon are called i i can't remember yeah. they have like really cute names mm-hmm. i think yeah, I can't remember either. Um, but I oh, Gummymon. Yeah. Yeah, Gummymon is like I don't know what Cocomon's uh pre-evolution was, but Gummymon is Terriermon's. I'm, and and Terriermon is just he is incredibly cute in this movie. Oh, he's so adorable. Yes. Uh So yeah, part 3 is where I cuz I knew I at least knew who the characters were. Like, I had seen, uh, just from, like, the games and stuff. I had seen and know who, like, Ty and TK and Matt and, mm-hmm. like, the original uh, Digidestins. Like, I kind of knew who they were. But then in part three, I was, like, super lost when I was seeing that for the first time because I was like, who are these characters? I didn't even know that there was, like, a second series. Yeah, they, they introduced us to the cast of like the second anime um which is like cody the little kid i can't remember the girl's name um and then davis which is like the the clone of ty and he actually grew on me a lot i didn't like him at first because i was like it's just ty Mm -hmm. but like he he's actually like a fun like quirky character um yeah yeah, he really is just ty too he is and they even like they even comment on that car he's like he's just like ty like literally he like looks mm-hmm. like him he's got the same personality he's just Ty he's got goggles yeah. he's Ty <laughs> like, yeah um but TK and Kari are in New York now uh and and did you want to suddenly live in the real world um I yeah I don't I didn't really get that um they didn't explain that at all have you ever seen the second series I don't think I watched much of it at all I know that it had a lot to do with the digi armor digi evolutions yeah. like with the eggs was, and stuff like that yeah. that was like the big tie-in with like their their marketing mm-hmm. um but i yeah i don't i don't think i ever really watched that series very much um but shit starts yeah, getting like crushed like out of nowhere the the invisible force and we see willis like facing off against kokomon um mm. which I don't understand why they made such a big point of like, Agumon is now Greymon. I'm not Agumon anymore. I'm Greymon. But Kokomon is actually Wendigomon. Yeah, that's what I was going to talk about because uh, Kokomon is the is basically like a pink and brown version of Terriermon, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah, they st- he's Willis still refers to him, and everyone in the movie refers to him as Kokomon. Yeah, all throughout the third act, even though it's, you know, Wendigo Mon and Cherubi Mon and, you know, whatnot. Yeah. And I, I feel like that was kind of strange because they really go out of their way to be like, no, I am no longer Tento Mon. Now I'm Kabuteri Mon. Mm-hmm. So. I think it's more just that Kokomon didn't know, what did you say the, what he's really called, Wendigo Mon? Wendigo Mon, yeah doesn't can't like properly speak or communicate i mean there are moments where he tries to say something to willis but he's just a big like brute and and is 
filled with, uh, I, I guess, vengeance in a way. I yeah, that's kind what of sort of. They uh, they kind of explain by the end of the movie what was really going on, but mm-hmm. at at this point in the film, we don't really know what Wendigo Mon or, or Coco Mon wants. Yeah, they kind of just ramble the you know, go back, go back. Mm-hmm. And um, so Willis thinks he's talking about going back to Colorado. Yeah, and that that line actually reminds me of a. Uh, did you ever watch Courage the Cowardly Dog? I did, but I don't remember a lot from it. There was one episode that gave me nightmares as a kid, and it was the Curse of King Ramsey. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was like this weird, like, ghost mummy guy, and he's like, "Return the slab or suffer my curse." <laughs> um, and whenever I hear Coco Mon say "Go back," I just like I don't know why, but that image pops into my head because it was so yeah. frightening as a kid. Oh yeah, I. I did not watch Courage Cowardly Dog much because it would give me nightmares. Yeah, it was scary. I remember a That's a Raven episode giving me nightmares. Oh, really? <laughs> it's the one where Cory uh, shoplifts the monkey <laughs> okay. keychain, and then he has a nightmare where the monkey keychain is giant. <laughs> okay, like, yes, I remember this. Yeah. yeah, and that one actually like gave me nightmares. I was scared <laughs> of that monkey keychain. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, the third act, I... I don't like it as much. I like it just because I absolutely adore Terry Armon. I think he's the cutest Digimon, uh, easily, hands down. I love his design, uh, and his voice is just so cute. Yeah, whatever voice actor they chose for him is on point because it yeah. is just all around adorable. I feel like Terry Armon is the only reason I like the third act. and He just carries it throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, Willis and is traveling alone, uh, early on and it, they're like, I think they're traveling through the, they're traveling through some desert, I think. Yeah. Um, so it's like just searing hot and, uh, but like Terry Mon doesn't care about the heat. He just doesn't want to walk. Yeah. He says, and uh, so, my toes are worn out and I don't even yeah. wear shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh god he's so cute yeah and so he ends up just being like sitting on top of willis's head and sticking his ears out like a little umbrella and giving him yeah. shade just so adorable just too cute i can't take it um, yeah i love that part and then uh, i feel like suddenly it cuts back to tk and kari on the train for some reason um yeah right after the desert and they're like going through the twilight zone basically like i think they're entering into some sort of digital area and, and Coco Mon is there for, like, no reason. And I had to put a note because it was so strange to me. This it, this extended scene where Kari's butt is, like, right in the camera. I remember that. I remember that because I remember seeing that and being like, isn't she, like, 14? Yeah. Isn't that weird? I mean, it kind of makes sense with the, the culture of, like, anime. Um, yeah, they They, they, they kind of romanticize and sexualize young girls in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I, I did, I did find that kind of strange because it was the Americanized version of it. You know, I, I thought maybe they'd censor it and it's not like super sexual. I just thought it was funny cause they, there's just, yeah, like 30 seconds of just like her butt in front of the camera while she's like hung over a chair. <laughs> and I was mm-hmm. like, wait, this is Digimon. So you, uh, you said like, it's true. Kokomon just shows up out of nowhere for no reason. Yeah, he um, shows up at the train with Kari and TK, and, and they're not connected to... I mean, I well, guess they did see Willis in yeah. New York for a moment. They were behind the fence. Um, yes. So, so maybe he has some sort of reason to, like, chase him down, like, you know, witnesses. I'm almost kind of wondering if it's, like, Kokomon trying to, like, guide them to Willis because he knows that, like, they can help him. Yeah, sort of thing. yeah, I can see that because there is this idea that Kokomon's asking for help. Yeah, and... he's asking for help, but he doesn't... <clears throat> he, he can't quite tell exactly... Uh, he doesn't know himself what's gonna help him. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it could, it, it could be that. Or it could just be he saw them, and so he's trying to hunt them down, or whatever you know, generic reason they could come up with to just sort of... Just hand, tie it back in. Fist them somehow. into the plot, yeah. Yeah. Um, cause I think that was, I mean, they were a part of the second series 
TK and Kari were, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure they were. Yeah, as um, they were older. I think Kari was dating Davis, and TK has, like, the cool white hat. I wanted to cosplay him as a kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Because um, I just love Patamon. Yeah. 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 Uh, Yeah. So it was just kind of ham-fisting those two characters who are from a different part of the world. <laughs> yeah, uh, from Japan. Yeah, from Japan, and they just happen to... Willis ties the cast together. Um, yeah, the the old cast and the new cast. We we don't see Ty and Matt at all, aside from like a, a short clip in the beginning of Act 3 where it's like, Matt plays guitar now. <laughs> yeah, Matt plays guitar. Yeah, he, he goes TK, by the stage name of like the TK. Digi Destin, formerly known as Matt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Ty loves soccer. <laughs> and Ty, yeah, Ty doing Ty's doing soccer, and yeah, uh, yeah. So I think at, after the train ride, how did they stumble upon Davis and Cody and uh, what's her name? I, I cannot remember her name. Yeah. So the I can't think of her name. The the girl with that new Digi Destin group. Um, alludes to the fact that she has a bunch of uncles in different industries and she has like an uncle who owns a taxi company and is like the the taxi driver who like practically gets him killed and he like plays banjo music really loud um and and they end up in the same desert and they sneak onto a truck um which has willis in it that's right yeah the willis and terry mon are just they have already hitchhiked onto this truck yeah. And they just so happen to end up on the same truck as Willis. Yeah, so so uh, coincidental. Yeah. And there's this really weird line where Davis is like, wait, is that a Digimon? Like, he didn't recognize Terriermon <laughs> was a Digimon. Yeah, he and just then, like, thought the re- was a green rabbit. <laughs> yeah, and the rest of the group is like, oh, yeah, I think you might be right. That sure looks like a Digimon, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, w- Willis is super flirty. He's He's horny on main. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, keeps... I think Willis, he, he is, he, like, tries to hit on uh, the, yeah, the girl from the second series. He tries to hit on her, the new girl. Um, and I, I think he seemingly almost does it just to annoy Dave, Davis. I think so. I think he's just poking fun. Yeah. Um, there's nothing that, like, makes that character seem predatory at all. No, yeah. But I just thought it was so funny because, like, his... We don't know much about Willis aside from the fact that he's incredibly smart. He's on the run from Kokomon. And he's horny on Maine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. But I, I think they order a pizza for some reason in order to get someone to pick him up. Yeah, And yeah. Willis and Davis get left behind. Um and I think Kokomon shows up and Demi Devimon digivolves into, um, oh shoot, what was it? Uh, Vimon? I, I think right. he does Ar- Vimon and then he goes into like oh, Flame Dramon. Flame Dramon. Yeah, yeah, he, he right. armor digivolves into Flame Dramon. The Fire of Courage. The Fire of Courage, yeah. And it's so cool. He has like the flare rocket and he fights Kokomon for a little bit there. And, uh, Kokomon yeah, and think- uses Cable Crusher and his arms like extend like a big rope. And then... Terrier Mon, does he evolve at that point as well? He or... does. He turns into Gargomon, yeah. and yes. the, it's just so silly. His uh, big baggy pants, and then he has can- like Gatling guns for yeah, arms. Guns for yeah, guns for hands. <laughs> uh, totally um, ridiculous. I don't even think he I, shoots him either. I think he just bonks Kokomon on the head like two or three times. I think times. so too. Yeah, he just he just gives him a, a good old bonk. Yeah, uh, and then Terrier Mon holds. Uh, Willis's hand, and he's like, "We're a team now." <laughs> it's so mm-hmm. cute. Yeah, oh, it's so so cute. Um, yeah, and then there's uh, Willis is trying to leave them, right? He's 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 trying to tell them to leave him alone. I think so. I think he's worried that Kokomon is going to hurt them too. They allude yes. to like the idea that Kokomon's made people disappear, if not yeah. killed other people in Willis's life. Yeah, he mentions, yeah, people in my life always tend to get hurt, or people that, like, are, yeah, people that are in his life keep getting hurt because of Kokomon. Um, yeah. Yeah, so he's very hesitant to accept their help, but Davis, being, like, 
Davis and being annoying. He's basically just like Ty, but rap, like ramped up to 11 on the scale of Yeah, he's like obnoxious. more obnoxious than Ty, for yeah, sure. Yeah. But he's so, uh, so he's so animated, too. I love the uh, the amount of faces they make him do and like the weird stretch. Yeah. Like um, it's, it's very like emoted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's definitely very he's very emotive. He's almost kind of like a caricature of Ty. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so Davis basically wants to help Willis just because he's Davis. I yeah. mean, he's kind of like, "Oh, you've got Digimon, we've got Digimon. Like, we need yeah, to help we're, each we're other out." We're connected. We're we're Digidestins. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do I do think he has this empathetic like bond with him at this point already. Yeah. Um and then and then Digimon turns into Raidramon and they write him and we get the Hey Digimon song. Yeah. Hey Digimon, hey Digimon. Monster friends to the boys and girls. Yeah, well, it's so very cute song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very cool scene. The way that it's animated is very cool. Yeah, I love the uh, way like the that Raidramon like runs and with them riding on top of him and like Terriermon holding onto his tail. Yeah, just um, a really wholesome moment uh, before kind of just like shit hits the fan. It does. From here forward, it gets like really intense because Willis yeah. reveals he's like, uh, I created Cocomon. And like, they're the, they're the him and Davis are on that hike where they bond together. Um, mm-hmm. And he like reveals his past and it goes to that like sepia tone flashback where he tells everyone that, uh, you know, I, I made Diaboramon by accident. Like, I was trying to create another digi egg, and the the virus tracked us down, and he corrupted Cocomon, and then Davis starts crying, and he's like, "That's the s- saddest story ever." <laughs> her, 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 heard. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. That's kind of, it's kind of like I think it's a little darker, or like the sun's going down, or something. Yeah. The, yeah. The the tone gets very, themselves. you know. Yeah. Very, very dark. dark and brooding and it gets a little serious yeah. but then we get terrier mon showing up in his blanket yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's so cute very adorable like wanders um, up all think, sleepy um i can't remember there's a point where terrier mon uh says this and i can't remember if it's at that moment or if it's maybe earlier on when willis is trying to oh no it's 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 later on like i think it's after like kind of like the final fight and willis thinks that terry Ramon dies or something like that hmm. i can't remember but uh d- just this there's this cute little line that terry Ramon says where he's like like willis i'm your friend and like, oh your that will always be there for each other like oh my gosh just yeah so cute. no that that definitely is the scene we're talking about right now he's in yeah, the blanket yeah. and he's like i want to help and he's like no like tear your mom i can't risk you getting hurt and he's like yes, we're friends right. friends are always there for each other i know oh it's so, so cute. cute it warms my heart it's yeah. so adorable that really so the good. like what i enjoy so much about the movie is just how wholesome it is um and i guess that's kind of why i enjoy watching these like older cartoons uh, that I really enjoyed when I was a kid. It's just because they're so wholesome. Like, yeah, uh, it, it feels like a safety net to me. Um, yeah, the yeah, the cause... amount of memories and nostalgia behind them, mm-hmm. and yeah, like just just the the wholesomeness about it because it's not like they're giving you these antagonizing scenarios necessarily. There there are like a lot of you know drama and there's fight scenes and and danger, but like the amount of friendship they like propose within it yeah um yeah it's just so wholesome yeah for sure and then this is when after that is the big fight scene right yeah i think that's when it starts the big fight yeah they're kind of in a a mysterious field and i don't remember how they get to the field i don't i don't think they really explain they just kind of end up there i think it's just like uh like Undis- uh, like nondescript area where they fought sort of yeah. thing. I, don't, I, I really think, I think that much. that is the field in Colorado that they ran in during the flashbacks. It could be, yeah. Um, but they don't really allude to where 
they are in Colorado, just that they're back at, you know, go back to the beginning mm-hmm. um, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and c- they, so they fight for a little bit. I think at this point, all of the Digi-Destins, Digimon, they like Digivolve right away. They armor Digivolve right away. Yeah. So Kokomon or Windigomon um, turns into Antelamon the the okay. evil form it's kind of like a like yes. a big skinny lanky bunny um and i i think he's really cool there's this like bendy stretchiness to the character um that really personifies uh just like the i keep going back to it like the, just the weight and the amount of like power it takes to like move um mm-hmm. and it's super cool and then yeah we get uh I think Gargomon digivolves into Digmon, the drill of power. Drill of power. And then what's the, the bird? Uh, Uh, It's like the Hawkmon. And he's a dumb voice. (laughs) He turns into Halzimon, the wings of love, the wings of love. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The fight scene though is super cool with them. Uh, Just like tons of like environmental destruction and cool physics, rocks flying around, smoke effects. Um, and, and Tillamon is just so rad. He's so flowy and like, bendy. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. They fight for a brief period, and then he basically just whoops their asses, and they get sent back to their uh, rookie form, right? That's their rookie form. Yeah, so, yeah, he, he knocks him around. I think Cody, like the little short kid, makes some joke about Digmon not being animated enough, um, yeah. which I thought was funny. But, yeah, I think he kicks all their asses, and they all turn back into their rookie forms, and then Antelamon, like, sinks into the water, and he comes out as evil Ch- Cherubimon. Mm-hmm. Um, and he, like, opens his mouth, and it's all, like, psychedelic and weird and, like, blobby-looking inside of him. Um but yeah, this is when the the big fight scene comes in, and he starts like juggling them around, <laughs> and like throws them into a wall. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then is it? Because I remember at one point they don't they go inside of him. They do. That's a little later. Yeah, um, but but I, they, they do. He's like turning back time, right? Because yeah, he's, everyone starts rapidly getting younger. The yeah, digital, so I, I think and the I think Angewomon and Angemon show up at this point. Um and Angewomon I just want to say as a babe. I, I <laughs> okay. don't know why the Digimon creators thought it was okay to make Digimon hot. <laughs> yeah, uh I yeah, it's a very that, yeah. that's kind of the thing that I really liked about Digimon is that yeah, they just edgy. did not care about the designs like like being cohesive and making a lot of sense yeah with pokemon like, it's like consistent like these are pokemon and like with mm-hmm. digimon it's like nah that's a fursona and, and that's a super hot scantily clad woman <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, yep <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but yeah so everyone starts turning back into children and kokomon is like controlling time and like rewinding stuff and i think angewomon and angemon did evolve into seraphimon and magnadramon mm-hmm. in order to release the golden digi eggs but they get like slapped out of the fucking air. Yeah, almost. Yeah, just like right away, just slap they, down to the air, back into their rookies. Yeah, they just in the whole plot surrounding them showing up was just to summon the like golden armor digi egg. Yeah, so that <laughs> Terrier Mon and V Mon can use it. Yeah. Um, which I appreciate because because Magnamon and Rapidmon are super cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I love Rapidmon's like little bunny torpedoes. Um, yeah, and I, I feel like Magnamon wasn't shown quite a, enough, um, but it really was all about Terriermon's like strength and like standing up to such a big boss, someone he's mm-hmm. connected to too. This is like an emotional bond. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Cherubi starts. Cherubimon starts like getting shot to shit, and he's like regenerating, and like the it's like soft body physics almost. He looks like he's like very soupy and like, you know, splitting apart. And, and that yeah. that's when they dive into his tummy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And inside of there, I was talking about earlier, the kind of, uh, CGI background is when they really go full force, 
full force with it and it's this like weird psychedelic like it's almost kind of like a different like realm that they go into yeah very psychedelic lots of like weird like bubbly like effects happening yeah um strange colors and stuff yeah i think it's really cool i really like it um yeah and i can't remember exactly what they're fighting inside so i if i remember correctly when they go inside of Cherubimon, they see wendigomon and he can finally speak freely now because like they're they're inside and he's like you know destroy the virus and like points to his heart that's right and um i think they still fight him though but they defeat the the Kokomon version or whatever that's inside and Shrubimon turns into this beautiful white and gold cute good form he's got the mm-hmm. cutest little face and then he just yes. disappears he just fades away <laughs> into stardust which I yeah with what happens later like I don't get why I guess just they, they destroyed the virus and that was what was keeping him alive because he was hurt before when he was younger and yeah, I think I think they specifically say that the amount of damage was too much for him to sustain. He wasn't able to heal himself within the virus. Yeah. Um, so it was it was a, a very much a mercy killing or a sacrificial like situation. Yeah. Um, um, but then uh, I think Terriermon is like, you know, Kokomon is gone, but Digimon never really die. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. so sad. And then Willis kisses Kari, horny on main. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he just kind of like sneaks a ki- like a kiss on the cheek, right? He does. That's not Yeah, uh, yeah I I think so. If it was on the lips it'd be a little different cuz like it was not consensual, but it it was a cute like little gesture just to make Davis mad. Yeah. Uh Yeah, I don't really remember too much after that. I remember like the end end. Is there anything in between that and the beach scene that kind of goes on? Uh, kind of, sort of. I mean, they, Will, Will, Willis kisses Dave, or not Davis, <laughs> Willis kisses Kari, <laughs> and then they just kind of cut to him on a beach, and a digi egg kind of floats up in the water, and yeah. I had to make a note of it, because I thought it was weird that immediately he's like, Kokomon! <laughs> like, mm-hmm. strange but accurate, like, assumption. Um, yeah. But then we just get Wendigo Mon, Kokomon, dancing to All Star by Smash Mouth. Yeah, that's what I... D- okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> He's Which just swaying is, back and forth. Like, I was, hey, now, yeah. you're an all-star. <laughs> I have a lot to say about that, but what I never understood was why does he come back as, like, his infected, like, virus form? That's right, what and, I, and I, I then he disappears again. Yeah. The credits but, roll, and he just disappears, and it's like, wait, so Kokomon didn't come back? He just popped up to dance to All-Star yeah. by Smash Mouth? <laughs> yeah, I know. Died again? <laughs> oh, and it's... Okay, yeah. <laughs> This movie has the most fitting end to, uh, like, what it is. It is and encompassing it, to what this is as a yeah, time capsule. and to just, what I, like, yeah, appreciate so much about the movie and how it just warms my heart. Is it, is it just, it's, it is just unapologetically, uh, like, two, early 2000s. Totally, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and I just... I was watching it with uh, Kelsey, uh, my girlfriend, for people I don't know. Um, Kelsey's and, cool. Yeah, and uh, she was just, like, losing her mind when <laughs> <laughs> when All Star started playing. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's just, like... It's so random and, like... Uh, yeah. And she just was just, like, of course. She was like, of course they end this movie with Smash Mouth. Of, of course, course they do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just, yeah, I just love it. It's yeah. so good. And then the credits, the credits roll, roll and yeah. it, it, it goes to uh, Kids of America. Yeah. Looking at it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is still <laughs> just. I know that they were in America at the end of it, but all of the characters but Willis are Japanese. Yep. Yeah. They were just. They were really reaching for, for some extra 2000s pop right there. Yeah. It was. Making their, making their budget worth it. They were trying to get mm-hmm. the biggest soundtrack they could. <laughs> It makes me wonder if uh, 20th Century Fox had some, like, maybe they own, like, uh, 
a record label that yeah. is signed with those bands and so they just had those songs on standby and they were like okay let's just throw these in or if that's where the budget went was because th- these movies were already made and they just spliced them together and uh voiced over everything yeah i think a lot of the budget went into and it was a small budget too i, I think yeah. a lot of it went into the the soundtrack the um dubbing and then just like fox was like really really trying to like force <clears throat> excuse me the uh the production team to like americanize it as much as possible mm-hmm. um and yeah I, I think they put a lot of money into that soundtrack and to be honest <laughs> i don't mind it at all i think no, it's still I, so fun and weird it's definitely and quirky. Uh, the songs are definitely not something that i would share to people like i wouldn't be like oh dude like i love this song uh do you want to listen to all star by smash mouth (laughs) yeah like like, uh, i mean i might do that honestly (laughs) well like uh but i don't listen to it that's a good example uh, that's a good example of uh, people like just totally shitting on smash mouth and that song just for what it is and this just them being a totally corny band and they were just very uh just very marketable and they weren't really like nobody was like oh yeah like smash mouth speaks to me or whatever yeah i mean um, at that time smash mouth was top 40s like yeah that was as cool as it got in a way mm-hmm. it was like all about you know you get those surfer vibes and those bleach tips and like you yeah know, yeah smash mouth and ska music early pop I, punk i am ashamed to say but also unashamed to say that i absolutely love that song just because it's uh just because of what it is and what it's been in just so many like silly animated uh not animated and live action movies i mean it's been in countless amounts of movies Uh, yeah it's turned into a meme by by this point in 2021 but Mm -hmm. it really does hold like a lot of good memories for me whether it was shrek or uh you know american pie or something like mm-hmm. that that song encompasses the vibe of that time period so well yeah um is there anything else you want to talk about about the movie i don't know i mean i, I that was the whole movie it was it's fun yeah. and silly and weird and <laughs> poorly put together to be honest but mm-hmm. it's so good it's just such a good time capsule of music and comedy and i just i just absolutely love the animation in it oh uh one thing i did want to mention is the cover art for the movie right i had the i had a vhs copy of it yeah i have a vhs copy and i have a dvd copy and it's the same cover art so um it's kind of just like what you would expect it's all of the main characters most of them from the third act Mm -hmm. uh and then you have like this, uh, the second act. Uh, they're like kind of like in uh, the like digital screens that are in the movie at one point, where it's like displaying them, and they're talking to their Digimon. It yeah. has them on the sides, but it's mostly like uh, TK and Kari and Davis and Willis uh, at the forefront. But at the forefront, there's the Digimon beside them. And it, so Terriermon, Terriermon is there twice. Yeah. For people that don't know, like, and are curious, go and look up, the, like, the first Digimon movie's, like, box art. And you will see that Terriermon is, like, a little white cream and green bunny-looking character with a horn on his head. He's just on the cover twice in two completely different art styles. Yeah, two and completely different art no styles. And I have no idea why. So I, I personally think that they intended to market it in some way where T- Terriermon and Kokomon were um, like two, similar looking, but with yeah, smaller two, sizes. two sides of the same coin. Because Kokomon within the game is a purple and brown variant of Terriermon. Yes, and she, the only difference is that she's purple and purple and brown, and she's got three horns instead of one. Yeah, That's so I, I think when they made the art for it, they didn't want to spoil Wendigo Mon's like design, and Maybe, they were just yeah. like, "How can we make it look like there's two twin Digimon?" 
Because <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Kokomon's like, you know, rookie form never shows up in the movie. Yeah. So yeah. they just, whoever did the graphic design for it probably was like under a bunch of pressure to like try to convey that. And like, look, let's just two drastically different <laughs> pictures of Terrier Mon at the same yeah, time. It, no one will know. I, that's got to be it because it, it just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense Mm -hmm. and also the like i guess knockoff terrier mon isn't like next to willis he's like next to kari or something so i don't yeah it's it's super bizarre and i feel like it's something that it it's it illustrates how much uh, they just didn't give a fuck <laughs> exactly. about what they were putting out. And yeah, it was... I, I really feel like Fox, like whatever corporate heads were there, they're like, look, there's twin Digimon. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Show yeah. that on the cover. There's twin Digimon. And I'm like, okay, yep. <laughs> like here's two, <laughs> two weird photos of Terrier Mon side by side. Yeah. But we can't put them too close together because they're different art styles. So yeah, yeah. Put that one by Kari. <laughs> Super bizarre. Uh, yeah, I think that's, pretty much it though that i've got on my mind Um, yeah i I feel like we dissected that in some way yeah we we really talked about as much as we could and i I really had fun yeah i had a lot of fun too Uh, maybe a little long-winded maybe just for what it is (laughs) like talking about the digimon movie but i had a lot of fun yeah i mean i I, I I think we we pushed think, it in some ways. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I think I definitely did have a lot of fun, like, uh, listening to your recollection of, like, things that <laughs> happened in the movie uh, <clears throat> more than, like, watching certain parts of it, for sure. Uh, but maybe that's just because I've seen it so much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I've it, kind of the, I guess, the whole point of this um to kind of bring things to a close I, it's just i guess what i would want to leave people like also like if you're at this point and you're listening thank you so much for listening you're very sweet uh, just thank you so much even though it was um, so long-winded <laughs> yes uh, <laughs> thank you for listening uh to us ramble about the digimon movie uh but i guess the point that i would want to drive home is just like uh like hold like everyone is going to have like these little things uh, in your life as you grow older that you'll remember and look back on fondly um you know for us and that's kind of the whole point of this podcast is just appreciating the things that matter to us and i you'd be hard pressed like i feel like we'd be hard pressed to find someone who maybe cares about this movie as much as we do Uh, yeah (laughs) absolutely (laughs) But, uh, yeah, like, f- I encourage anyone that's listening to, like, just revisit some of those things that you remember brought you so much joy when you were younger, because it's still there. Um, and, yeah, it's it's always waiting for you, really. I, I, I don't know. I, it's maybe a little corny, but uh, just I want something positive to come out of this if somebody does listen. So, yeah, I hope you, I hope you find your Digimon movie. <laughs> I guess. Absolutely. I hope you find your Digimon movie. Whatever it is, that nostalgic kick that, that brings you something warm and comforting. Yeah. I think that's what's important about it. For sure. Um, yeah. Should we say our goodbyes then, I guess? Yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. If you did. Um, sorry if it was long-winded and overly detailed, but there's just so much fun things to say about Digimon. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening. Until next time, bye. See ya.